This is one of the things that really tripped me up when I was first learning Svelkit. This script tag right here actually runs on the server as well as the client. For number one, I want to begin with load functions. Load functions are one of my favorite features of Svelte, and when I first started using them, I didn't realize how much they could actually do. A normal load function, the way you'll typically end up using it, is you'll go through and you'll have some asynchronous function here. You'll typically have like a database call or some authentication check here. So I'd do something here like await fake fetch. I'd have my stream data here. I'd have my normal data here. I would have all this returned. Then my client would end up utilizing this. And then whenever, whenever I go onto this page itself, I'll go ahead and refresh it and it'd take like three seconds to load because I'd be fetching everything and that's how you would typically do things. What I didn't realize at the time is that load functions can actually stream data down to the client. And what does this mean? Well, streaming effectively means that I can return a promise from my load function and instead of blocking the entire site's loading on the long fetch, it will render the site and then on the front end itself, we can just await the streamed data like a normal promise. So what I can do is I can go back over to my load function. We can get rid of this await. I can go ahead and save this. And if we go back over to this page and reload, it's going to say loading my stream response for three seconds, and then it'll populate in the stream response. So when a new user comes to the site, they don't have to wait for that three second long call to get content. No, they're just going to get all the quick content down. They're going to get their initial state of the load function populated, and then we can update the UI with the actual loaded content once it's ready. And this is an incredibly potent way to make your UIs look and feel far, far, far more performant. The next thing I want to talk about is the layout system. When I was first working with Svelkit, I came from a React background. I have a very component based way of thinking about the web. So getting into SvelteKit's very heavily page-based model was kind of a mental shift for me. What I did here is I just have a nav bar up here which has a link to the first page and a link to the second page in this little slot. And by putting this layout.svelte at the root of the nested directory, the page within first and the page within second are actually loaded within the slot of this layout. So here it doesn't look that fancy. It's just like, okay, we're just sharing a nav bar between these two. But to give you a real life example here, this is a real life e-commerce site I built in Svelkit and the UI for this little dashboard admin page, these are all individual pages. So when I click between images and I click between tags and I click between sizes, I'm actually navigating between different pages. My URL is actually changing here. That may just seem like, okay, it's a convenient way to share UI but it's even more potent than that because remember with Svelkit, everything is very page based. We have our form actions and we have our load functions, which are directly tied to our page.svelts. So since I can nest pages in here, I can nest load functions in here. This images has a load function instead of having to be like a component or something. And then that component fetches an API route. It gets its own collection of load functions and form actions, which are directly attached to it. So within this example here, within my first directory, I could add a load function, which would call whenever I go to the first route, but not whenever I go to the second route. So you can see how if you're building like a dashboard or a more complicated UI, it's really powerful to be able to put pages within pages effectively that's really what you're doing you're creating a layout and then you're just swapping out what's being rendered within an individual section it's a different way of thinking about things but it's really great once you get used to it and the number three biggest mistake i made when i was learning svelte is not being subscribed to this channel no nah, i'm just kidding the actual number three is not utilizing the incredible ecosystem that svelkit has uh, whenever you look up Svelkit or you listen to what a lot of people say online, you're going to get the impression that Svelkit does not have nearly the ecosystem or support that React does. And while yes, it doesn't quite have the same level of packages and there are a lot of things missing and a lot of products do focus on React before Svelte, Svelkit has a pretty extraordinary ecosystem of packages that are built directly for it that allow you to make some pretty extraordinary sites. And I want to highlight a couple of them here. The first one is obviously going to be Shad CN Svelte. This has become my UI library of choice. If you go into my current biggest Svelkit production site, when I go ahead and hit this add to bag button right here, that little pop-up drawer is actually a Shad CN component. The best way I've described this in the past, I think, is they're kind of like Lego blocks. You just get all of these little pieces and blocks that you can just kind of put together and customize a little bit. You can use to create beautiful user interfaces. The next one I want to highlight is Lucia Auth. Lucia Auth is a fantastic way to run authentication in Svelkit apps. It is a authentication library. It gives you a bunch of really nice things to put into your Svelkit app to handle authentication. It's really quick. It's 
really simple and easy to use. And one of the best parts of it is that your auth lives in your database. It's not a full provider. It's just a nice way to handle authentication. It works in a ton of different frameworks, but I found this felt kit support to be first class. And then the last one I want to highlight here is going to be super forms. This is one that personally I've kind of underutilized. I kind of just run my form actions in a pretty janky way and just put Zod form data on my form data and call it good. But if you want to do more complicated form stuff and want to get that nice end to end type safety, Superforms is the way to do it. It's a fantastic project. Uh, one of the biggest and I think best that Svelkit has, and I highly recommend checking it out for your projects. And for number four, I want to talk about the distinction between the client and the server and really more about server side rendering. This is one of the things that really tripped me up when I was first learning Svelkit. I did not fully grasp the concept that this script tag right here actually runs on the server as well as the client. I want to illustrate this real quick with this little console.log here. If you go into the actual example here and I refresh, you're going to see hello there in the console. Makes sense. It's what we'd expect. But you know what else you're going to see? You're going to see hello there in the actual terminal of the server. So it is running on both the client and the server. The way to get around this is to go ahead and add an effect in here. We're using Svelte 5 runes in here because that is going to be so hype when that comes out. I'm so excited. Um, so hello there new. We're going to go over here and then if we refresh, we're going to get hello there new and hello there new is not going to show up on our server. So you want to make sure that you understand where things are running. There's a lot of intricacy and nuance between the client and the server and sell kit. The bloat line, the lines get blurred. Like for example, the page.ts file that can run on the server, but it can also run on the client versus page.server.ts only ever runs on the server. And there's a lot of nuance here, not going to get too deep into all of it in this video, because frankly, I think that there's a place that explains this way better than I ever could. And that's going to be my number five thing that I wish I did when I started Svelte. And that is the official Svelte Kit tutorial. The official Svelte Kit tutorial is genuinely amazing. They did a phenomenal job of taking you through pretty much everything you know to build production grade Svelte Kit apps. Uh, the first two parts are just about Svelte, so that's going to be like client side reactivity stuff. And then at part three and part four, that's when we get into Svelte Kit. That's when we get into our different API routes, our routing, our loading data. And when we get into like the advanced Svelte section, they have really great breakdowns on CSRs, SSR, pre rendering, tailing slash, all these really important concepts, which I think the best way to understand these is to actually run through this tutorial rather Rather than me just telling you, go actually play with this in the documentation and see how it works for yourself. You will learn a lot. Definitely go check it out.